Exodus chapter 28, verse 41. And thou shalt put them, this is talking about the clothing, Moses, God was telling Moses what to do with Aaron and, the, and his sons and what to do. And he says, and thou shalt put these clothing, these clothes, upon Aaron thy brother and his sons with him, and shalt anoint them and consecrate them. Now notice, anointing has to do with consecration. And sanctify, oh, now it's got to do with sanctification also. And sanctify them that so that, now notice, they may minister unto me in the priest's office. So they could not minister to him in the priest's office until they were anointed, consecrated, and sanctified. Consecration is you dedicating yourself to God. Sanctification is you separating yourself from wrong, from sin, okay? And separating yourself unto God. In other words, consecration is you saying, God, I consecrate my, I'm yours, I'm yours alone. No one else has any leans on me or anything else. They have nothing on me. I will follow you and I consecrate myself to you from this day forth. Then the next part is sanctification. The sanctification is when you separate yourself from the sin unto holiness. From sin unto holiness. Now understand, if you have not separated yourself from sin, you cannot be holy. God cannot make sin holy. Do you understand that? That's why he said, lift up holy hands. What does that mean? Hands that are not doing wrong. Amen? He tells us to present our bodies a living sacrifice. Right? So these are all having to do with a way you live. Right? It's not just a state of mind or an idea or a theory. This is how you live life. This is how people see your light as you let it shine. See, they don't see your light because you have a theory. Because they don't know what your theory is. They see your light because of how you live your life. Amen? Now, he says, uh, Exodus 29, verse 7, Then shalt thou take the anointing oil and pour it upon his head and anoint him. So now, you'll notice both these kinds of anointing, or this is one kind of anointing talked about several places. It's a physical anointing with oil that a person consecrated to God, set apart in the priest's office, as we would say, would have to anoint someone else to put them in that office, right? And so that anointing was a physical anointing. Now, you will see no power here. There's no mention of power. It doesn't say once they're anointed, gifts of the Spirit are going to operate or, you know, they're not going to have miracles. None of that happened. You get that? Um, in Exodus 29, 35, it says, And thus shalt thou do unto Aaron and to his sons, according to all things that I've commanded you, seven days shalt thou consecrate them. Notice consecration was the important thing here. The anointing with oil just showed, set them apart to say, see this person? We're setting them into a position as priests to serve God. So the anointing set people apart unto God, 